With the Corsair Build Kit, you've got everything you need to put together your own system, with parts guaranteed to work together. This takes the guesswork out of picking parts, while still giving you all the fun of building it yourself. Once your Corsair Build Kit arrives, open the package and verify that you've received all your hardware using the hardware checklist. Unbox your case and remove all packaging material. Remove the front panel and filter, tempered glass side panel, aluminum side panel, and the top filter. Place these items safely on a flat surface. Remove the foam located above the hard drive cage, as well as the accessories box that contains screws, washers, and zip ties. Remove the L-shaped cover that is wrapped in bubble wrap, as it won't be used for assembling the build kit. And finally, set aside the screws, zip ties, and straps on a flat surface. You'll be needing these throughout the assembly. With our workspace and our case prepped, it's time to remove the motherboard from its packaging. We recommend placing the motherboard on the box it came in while we install components onto it. Unpack the CPU and install it onto the motherboard. Don't remove the plastic cover over the CPU socket, as this will come off on its own when the CPU is installed properly. Release the latch by pushing the latch down and out to the right to open it. When installing the CPU, look for the small triangle that is located on the bottom left corner. Match this triangle with the small triangle at the bottom left corner of the CPU socket. Gently place the CPU into the socket and close the latch. Next, remove the heatsink cover on the motherboard so that you can install your NVMe M.2 SSD. You'll find M.2 slots in the middle section of the motherboard. Locate and unpack the NVMe M.2 SSD that was included in your build kit and install it into the first M.2 slot located below the CPU socket. Secure it into place with the M.2 screw that was included with your motherboard. Replace the heatsink cover onto the NVMe M.2 SSD. Next up is our system memory. Unpack the memory and install the memory sticks into the second and fourth DIMM slots. Make sure to align the notch on the memory modules with the notch in the DIMM slots on the motherboard when installing. Now, we can install the motherboard into our case. First, make sure to install the motherboard I.O. shield in the back of the case if it was included as a separate piece in the motherboard box. Gently place the motherboard onto the standoffs in the case and secure it into place with the motherboard screws that came with your case's accessories box. Tighten the screws until they are snug, but avoid over-tightening to avoid damaging the motherboard. It's now time to install the all-in-one liquid CPU cooler for our build kit. Remove the cooler and its accessories from the packaging, being careful not to touch the pre-applied thermal paste at the bottom of the pump head. The liquid cooler will have a compatible Intel LGA1700 CPU bracket pre-installed, which will be needed to mount the cooler onto the CPU. To mount the liquid cooler onto the CPU, you will first need to install the backplate onto the backside of the motherboard. Before installing the backplate, make sure to remove the backing protecting the adhesive. Now align the four posts of the backplate with the holes located on the backside of the motherboard. Firmly press the bracket onto the backside of the motherboard to ensure a proper hold. Now with the backplate in place, install the four standoffs for Intel LGA1700. Moving back to the all-in-one liquid cooler itself, install the three RGB fans that were included with it onto its radiator. Align the fans with the mounting holes on the cooler's radiator and follow the orientation on screen to ensure proper installation. To secure the fans in place, use 12 of the long radiator screws that were provided. To install the cooler inside the case, mount the radiator above the motherboard and secure it in place using the 12 short screws and washers included with the cooler. Next, install the pump head onto the CPU socket by aligning the holes of the bracket with the standoffs that were installed previously. Secure the pump head into place by using the four provided thumb screws. Go in a crisscross pattern when securing the thumb screws and hand tighten them until they're snug. The case for this build kit should have three RGB fans pre-installed in the front as intakes. The final RGB fan included with the build kit should be installed as an exhaust in the rear of the case. The commander core that came with the liquid cooler should be installed on the cable management side of the case, towards the left side using the double-sided tape provided. This should give ample room to connect the cables from the fans. The case for our build kit has three pre-installed RGB fans in the front that are pre-connected to an RGB hub and a fan power hub. These cables can remain connected. Connect the RGB cable for the rear exhaust fan to port 4 on the case's RGB lighting hub. Connect the PWM cable for the rear exhaust fan to port 4 on the case's fan power hub. 
Connect the RGB cables for the top three radiator fans on the cooler in sequential order into the commander core on the side labeled RGB hub. Connect the power cables for the top three radiator fans in sequential order into the commander core on the side labeled fans. Locate the PWM cable for the case fan power hub and connect it to an open fan port on the commander core. Locate the 24 pin flat cable for the cooler's pump head and route it to the cable management side of the case. Connect it as shown, aligning the white marking on the connector with the port on the commander core. On the motherboard side of our case, locate the TAC cable coming from the cooler's pump head and connect it to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Next, connect the USB 3.2 cable to the USB 3.2 header and the USB 3.0 cable to the USB 3.0 header. Now, connect the USB 2.0 cables from both the commander core and the case's RGB lighting hub into the available USB 2.0 headers on the motherboard. Finally, connect the audio cables to the audio header and system panel cables to the system panel header. If you need additional help, refer to your motherboard's manual for a detailed description of the ports and connections. Unbox the power supply and retrieve the power supply cables. Install the required CPU power cables into the ATX 12V port located in the top left corner of the motherboard. Some motherboards may have connections for one or two of these CPU cables. Route the other end of the CPU power cables to the cable management side of the case. Install the 24-pin power cable into the right side of the motherboard and route the other end of the cable towards the cable management side of the case. Make sure that the latch is securely over the notch on the motherboard connector side. Locate a SATA power cable and connect the SATA power connections to the Commander Core, RGB Hub, and PWM Fan Power Hubs installed in the case. Now it's time to install the graphics card. Remove the PCI slot covers and unlatch the GPU slot. Insert the GPU and secure it into place with thumb screws. Next, locate the PCI Express power cables needed for your graphics card. It's best to supply a dedicated cable for each PCI Express connector present on the graphics card or adapter cable if it was included with one. Route the cables to the back of the case. Connect PCI Express power to the GPU. Your graphics card may need an adapter that would be included in the graphics card packaging. Now, go to the back and connect all power supply cables to your power supply and install the power supply into the bottom of the case. Secure it in place with the four screws provided. With all internal components and cables installed, take this opportunity to finalize your cable management and tidy things up. You can now reinstall all filters and panels for your system. Now that we've got everything assembled and connected in our build, it's time for a power on test. Grab the power cable that came with your build kit's power supply, connect one end to the PSU and the other end to a wall outlet. Flip the switch on the PSU to the on position. Make sure you've connected your monitor and peripherals while you're at it. Note that your monitor should connect to either an HDMI or display port on the graphics card, not the motherboard. If your motherboard included a Wi-Fi card, make sure to also connect the antennas. Now push the power button at the front of the system. Your new PC will now power on and boot into the Windows first time startup experience. Once you're on the desktop, activate your system by going to Activation Settings and change Product Key. Enter the Windows Activation Key provided with your build kit. Once activated, go to the desktop folder labeled Drivers and proceed to install all drivers, starting with the motherboard drivers, then Graphics Card, and finally IQ. When you've completed activation and driver installation, your system will now be ready for your favorite apps and games. And that's it! Corsair Build Kits take the guesswork out of picking components for a build, while still giving you the full DIY experience of assembling it yourself. Thanks for watching!